Hi. As you can tell, this isn't this isn't my usual setup. Uh, no, I do not have it on a motorized gimbal that is just tracking my face around. That is not what is happening. It is much cooler than that. This is all actually being done by the Sony ZV-E1 with its automatic AI tracking abilities, which is kind of cool. Like it just, oh. ideally with like a wide angle lens, you will be able to just have it follow you around and add some like dynamic movement to your videos or it just tracks you within the frame. So you can, you know, set the camera up, start talking to it, come over here and it hopefully, you know, tracks you. You can come back this way and it hopefully tracks you. Forget to get a prop that I need to use to make this video make sense. I can go up, get it, and then the camera basically tracks me, which is really cool. But but today we're talking about this camera and uh, how I've been using it for the last couple of days, playing around with it, how I used it to film last last week's video, like the last video, the 10 posing tips video. Uh, if you haven't seen that, link in the description and somewhere in one of these cards. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure it's here. I think it's on my right, which is your left. No, oh, maybe it is my left. Well, I've pointed to both corners now, so hopefully it pops up. Bloop and you can uh, go watch it so that's pretty cool uh i'm gonna turn this mode off because i think it's gonna become a little nauseating for you to watch so i'm gonna roll the intro i'm gonna turn this feature off and uh mm, let's get into it Okay, what's up everybody, we are back with another video. Today, we're talking about another camera. As you may know, I love cameras, I love filmmaking, I love vlogs, I love making YouTube videos. Uh, I say that and for the last couple of years, haven't been doing it, but 2024, I have vowed to start making more videos, more and more and more and more. So hopefully, mm, we get more into that and hope you've been enjoying the videos I've been putting out so far, but enough of that. We're talking about this video and in this video, we're talking about the Sony ZV-E1. Now, in the past, I have tested out the Nikon Z30, which is an APS-C vlogger's camera, which is you know a great option for people who are vlogging on a budget. It's their first camera, they want to start making YouTube videos, start content creating. I hate that, I hate that phrase. Don't, it's not, don't I being quite a content creator? Because I'm not, I'm a filmmaker, but I guess, you know, content creation comes, falls under that umbrella. I digress. Today, talking about my experience with the ZV-E1, how I used it to film the last video you saw, the 10 tips for posing. If you haven't seen it, again, link in the description or up in the, one of the corners there. And how I, you know, I'm actually really impressed with the camera itself. So let's just dive on in. For those who may have done their research, have already looked up this camera, it's basically like a Sony A7S 3 just in a different kind of body. As you can see, it doesn't have a viewfinder. It does have built-in microphones that actually sound really good. I believe there might be one more vlog coming out where I use this camera and you can definitely get a feel for the audio. The last uh, video was also shot on it, but I left everything on auto. I did have to do a bit of correction. I didn't like how the microphones were kind of picking up some certain things and rejecting other things, but uh, that's what you run with when you kind of just run with auto. With that being said, the audio quality of the microphones are so much better than almost any, any microphone built into cameras that I've seen and I'm super impressed with it. So the uh, Sony lent me the uh, ZV-E1, I'm actually filming on it. I've got it plugged into the Atomos Ninja, so we're recording 422 10-bit 4K, 25 frames a second video to the Atomos Ninja with the ZV-E1 using, of course, a Rode microphone. I'm actually recording S-Log, so hopefully this grades well. So actually, that's something I've noticed uh, when recording. The preview on the monitor, it doesn't look like S-Log. When you record it into the card and you get the footage into Final Cut, it looks like S-Log. It looks like log footage looks super flat, but right now on the monitor, it looks looks really well exposed, really good dynamic range, yes, but it doesn't look like log. When I turn on that the automatic framing, that's when it shows like S-Logs. Now, I don't know if that's just like a preview sort of thing that you get when recording video just to you know so it's not showing you an ugly flat image i just prefer sh uh, previewing in log format because it gives me an idea it makes i can make sure i am recording log i don't have to look at the image and go is this log or am i more recording h.264 is this standard standard color profile or or i'm shooting log right so that's kind of a little nitpick i have but it's really cool that it at least has log to be able to record into and it still records log who knows maybe i'll stop recording on the atomos and find out that all of this was 
was recorded in H.265 or H.264 and wasn't a log profile at all and I can, I'll be just super disappointed, super upset, but that's on me. That's on me, not the camera. So one of the gripes that you guys know I had with the ZV-30 and I, in fact, matter of fact, I actually had the Sony ZV-1 uh, Mark II which was a compact vlog camera that Sony had. I tested it out. I was going to make a video but I, just, I wasn't feeling it. I just didn't like, didn't like the footage coming out of it. Didn't like the audio quality that came out of it and that's probably just because I'm used to shooting on bigger mirrorless cameras with interchangeable lens systems, full frame sensors with nice microphones and on the ZV-1 Mark two it just it was the smaller sensor it was a one inch sensor so i just wasn't a fan hey look i will put in some b-roll of that camera some of the footage i've recorded on it so you can at least see the image quality again i think it was a fine camera for vlogs and again it was like the size of size of my phone really like it was that, that small of a camera but it was you know a much better image quality than my camera but the sony zv e1 kind of fixes all that by being a full frame mirrorless camera where i can put on nice lenses 16 to 35 50 mil lens I had the 50 mil, the 16 to 35, which were just amazing to work with, to trial, to test. This camera push it to the limit. So I shot some B-roll on the camera at 100 frames a second. I shot some B-roll at 50 frames a second. I shot the whole vlogs in 25 frames a second in log and I really enjoyed the whole entire process. I'm going to switch over to my regular camera so I can then talk about this Sony ZV-1 and show you a few of the features from the button layout and what I liked about the camera, what I didn't like about the camera and if I recommend it. I mean, spoiler alert, I do recommend it. If you can swing for it, 100%. Uh, it's a great camera but uh, I'm going to switch over to the other camera right now so bear with me okay and we are back on the main angle how does it look does it look can you see a difference can you tell that we're back on a different camera or does the zve1 hold up in a studio studio so environment's just my room but you know you gotta get started somewhere so i have been using this for the past couple of days the zve1 and it's I, there's, there's a lot of things i like about this camera there's a few things i don't like but the benefits of this camera outweigh what what i don't like so we're just gonna dive into what i like what i didn't like and uh whether or not you should buy one or at least consider this camera if you're looking at stepping up your youtube game stepping up your content creation if you want to get into filmmaking i think this is a very very good camera okay so first and foremost it is a full frame mirrorless camera so for someone like me who's used to shooting on mirrorless cameras full frame or APS-C this is this is great you get to choose what lens you want to use you don't get stuck just like the ZV-1 Mark II or the ZV-1 you don't get stuck with the built-in lens you get to take this lens off put on another lens and you get to choose which lens you you want to rock for today uh, and for me it's always like a 16 to 35 for vlogging so it's a staple lens in the vlogging community anyone who wants to get into vlogging or start vlogging i recommend a 16 to 35 or that sort of equivalent in whatever brand you're going i think nikon has a 14 to 24 but the full frame mirrorless camera it's it's great it's great because it's so it's so familiar being a mirrorless camera you still get all your manual control dials so here you've got your dial on the back you have your wheel that just makes uh setting all of your settings your, your aperture your shutter speed your iso i mean your aperture is actually on the ring for a lot of these new sony lenses which is really nice just go shutter speed aperture and then you hit the button go over your iso which is which is really nice so i love the fact that it's full frame mirrorless camera with ibis that's something they didn't take out of this camera and at the price point you kind of hope that they didn't take out ibis ibis is becoming more and more standard across all models of cameras doesn't necessarily have to be full frame a lot of crop sensor cameras are coming out but the fact that this camera has ibis in it mm, that's that's it's nice it's nice another great thing about this body of uh, the sony is i don't know if you can see that there but there's an easy photo video switch so you want to switch it to photos you switch it to photos you want to switch it to video you switch it to video you're doing slow motion uh, s and q you can switch it to that and that just speeds you up when you're shooting run and gun gorilla stuff run and gun gorilla style out in the city out vlogging out wherever you're making videos it's just it makes makes you faster so what are the specs on the camera vpop um I, honestly i don't know all the specs but i do know that it shoots 4k up to 50 frames a second it shoots 1080p at 100 frames a second which is really really nice uh, you know five years ago we didn't have many cameras that were shooting 1080p at 100 frames a second in fact with a software update i believe this can do 4k at 100 frames a second and then 1080p at 
200 frames a second. I think I read that somewhere or I watched a video and someone mentioned that. But if that's true, phenomenal. Like you get amazing video options with this camera. You can record 4K, 10 bit and 422 color signs, which for those who don't know, just means there's a lot more color data and a lot more color depth. So when you are grading, your stuff can look better. So you can use a camera just like the ZV-E1 to be able to start filmmaking. And if you want to get into filmmaking, get a cage on this thing, you can rig it up, make it like a filmmaking camera. You something you can definitely do like i would have no problem taking this onto a set using it as a b cam or even an a cam really i think the technology packed into this camera is is that good that you can use it as an a cam as a b cam on a professional shoot of course you might want to pair with some nice lenses but that's another whole can of worms we can get into the specs on this camera are amazing one issue i did run into i use basically just all v30 cards for, for my current setup i just use v30s apparently for a lot of the higher end codecs that this camera is doing you need v90 or v60 cards which i had no idea a very minor gripe but it's just a little a little interesting that sony was a bit more picky about what card it uses and i mean it makes sense it's high data high bandwidth and you know as someone who might be interested in buying this camera you're just going to get those cards as someone who has invested in uh, cf express cards type b and blew their entire memory card budget on CF Express, this was just a little disappointing. Not disappointing, it was a shock and I didn't expect it, but that's just something to keep in mind if you are interested in a Sony camera. I think, yeah, Sony in general, not just the ZV-E1. Funny if it was just a ZV-E1 that was like, I need a different card and every other Sony was like, I'm, I'm good with anything. Another great thing I love about this camera is that it's a lot smaller. Now it does come at the expense of having a bit of a smaller grip, but you get used to it. I've gotten used to it. I don't hate it as much as I, when I first grabbed hold i was like oh very small grip but you get used to how small the grip is and it's light which is amazing compared to the cameras i'm typically used to using um, holding it out to vlog it's so much easier especially with that flip out screen you hold it out you can just hold it by the lens you can start vlogging you don't even need a microphone because the internal mics are that good but yeah size and weight it's amazing how small and light it is it does become a little cramped on the back where it can only display so many buttons and so many dials and again it comes with the territory of being a smaller body uh, you, you have to make sacrifices but yeah it's a great small compact body hold on okay so normally what i have to do is because the microphones in my regular cameras aren't the best what i do is i would put i would put the camera in 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 one section here and then i'd have to put the microphone in another section over here which is fine but what if i wanted to say i know bring a 50 millimeter lens i can't fit it in this bag and i don't think you can fit in many slings without getting super massive of a sling what's great about the zve1 is because the microphones in my opinion are high enough quality they sound good enough i can now fit in the uh the zve1 with the 16 to 35 for vlogging and a 50 mil for portraits or b-roll or anything else like that it's just a small compact package that can basically go with you anywhere which is it's nice one of the i guess downsides downsides of this camera is that it's only 12 megapixels but in my opinion as a filmmaker as a videographer 12 megapixels is still plenty you can you can still get 4k 50 and again firmware update coming 4k 100 with log out of this camera and in low light <sighs> Oh, this camera, I mean, it doesn't excel at high ISO. No camera excels at high ISO, but at high ISO, you can really push this camera to like limits like I wouldn't normally push other cameras. It's just good to know that this camera can handle low ISO and even high ISOs when you need it. The 12 megapixel stills though, yeah, I'll admit, little lower resolution than what I'm used to shooting on at least 20 megapixels and now having just recently gotten 45 and even shooting on 30, 12 does seem like a bit of a hit not a major issue it just means i can't crop in as much as i may have may have used to now not to say that the photo capabilities of this camera aren't any you know any anything to scoff about you can still take amazing photos you put on a nice lens put on like a nice 50 bang on some portraits you can definitely still do all of that photos and video this camera does excel and it excels because it has amazing autofocus i remember hearing sony's got the best autofocus sony's killing it at the autofocus game and yes i i believe you 
I, I acknowledge it and I, I, yeah, I agree. Autofocus on this camera is amazing. Here, I did some test shots the other day and you can see the autofocus just really like, it's so snappy, it's so fast. Other cameras, they might start hunting, you know, in and out, like, but this one really just sticks on it and it locks in that autofocus, which is, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's nice to know. It's nice to know that the camera you have, the autofocus system, it's going to stick, which is, which is great. So you can actually even see the autofocus find the eye like through sunglasses, through helmets. I've seen demonstrations of this, of the Sony autofocus just locking on to all of these different like objects that other cameras may not. And that's because it's built on a very sophisticated AI algorithm for their autofocus, which, you know, good to know, good to see. On the topic of AI, this also has, I think it has a dedicated AI chip in it for a few, uh, few reasons. One, I'm sure it helps with the autofocus, but two and three, it also has the, the automatic framing that you saw early in this video here. I'll see if I've got any more clips, I'll throw it in. Automatic framing where you can put the camera down on a tripod and the sensor, the image will, will crop in and it will just frame around and follow you and track you across the entire frame as long as you're within frame of <laughs> the lens itself. It loses you for a bit, but if you come back relatively soon, it can pick you up again, which is it's a nice feature. I don't think you're gonna use it all the time. I don't think everyone's gonna use it all the time, but it's a nice feature to have. Just when if you don't have anyone to film you, you want to add some more dynamic movement to your shots or you want to be able to you know, I know you're doing a cooking video and you're in the kitchen and you're like then you go get a go get the thing and you walk over and the camera basically pans and follows you and you come back to your mixing bowl or whatever you're doing you can have the camera follow you and just it's a bit more dynamic than just having a locked off shot on a tripod and then just talking to camera i mean those shots have worked we've been doing them for years but it's just really cool that we have more options now and again i don't think i'll use it all the time but you know it's nice to know that the options there it's one of those things where you're just like oh we'll use the re reframing that's it's, it's, it's nice okay just let me have it. And another great thing about this camera is something called product showcase. An issue we have uh, when as YouTubers that are filming ourselves is that yes, the autofocus you know finds our faces and it will lock on, but sometimes we don't want it to lock on. So for example, I'm talking about the Sony ZV E1. Let's say I want to show you more detailed shots. What I have to do on the current setup I'm using is I have to basically cover my face, put the camera forward, and be like, yo, check out the camera. How cool does this look? especially in white you've got the little dead cat on the top too just to block out wind noise um, but I have to cover my face to be able to showcase this camera turn on product showcase mode and the autofocus will automatically recognize you're trying to show something off and rack to focus on that object which is you know really cool it's again it's one of those things that's only really designed for youtubers who are filming themselves but it's a really cool feature and I wish more companies will copy it Okay, let's get to the things I don't like about the camera. Something that is killing me as a photographer is the lack of a viewfinder. Now I understand that they wanted to use the top space here for the better microphone so you can get better audio. With. But as a photographer who's used to just always putting the camera up to his eye, taking photos, it's a, it took a little bit of an adjustment because it always just be like, it's just like, uh, you're holding it now at a distance or you're trying to back up. Oh, I'll just put it up to my eye so the camera can back up even more. But you can't do that because you can only be like this far away and you, you have to be able to see the screen, compose your image. So the lack of a viewfinder, I understand why they don't have a viewfinder on here. I think the trade-off is worth it, um, but I think what's been really cool is that a few years ago, you could actually get mirrorless cameras that had like a digital viewfinder that slid into the hot shoe. If they did like an accessory just like that, and I know they, they probably could, they've got the multi-interface hot shoe. They definitely could, probably could do something like that. I think that would be really cool and just really make this camera bulletproof for a filmmaker, content creator, photographer, whoever you are. It's a really solid camera. So those are my thoughts on the ZV E1. I really do like it. I like the tally light on the front. I got used to the ergonomics. I like that it's a full frame mirrorless camera with IBIS, 12 megapixels, 4K, 5th, and it's 3,200, something like that. Like, just, depending on where you look, it could be a little bit higher. I think it's definitely reaching upwards into the three and a half thousand dollars, which is, you know, not a, it's not a low amount to spend on a camera. If you've been doing YouTube and doing uh, filmmaking even for a while and you want to get a camera that's dedicated for filming, honestly, I really do think you should consider the ZV-E1. I do think that this would be a great contender for any aspiring creator, any 
aspiring filmmaker. It has the features and the functions that I think most of us as filmmakers need. I mean, let's be honest, a lot of these features we don't need. It's just all luxury, nice to have. But I really do think that this camera does pack everything you need as a filmmaker, content creator in today's age, especially with the new AI features, amazing autofocus, and all of the video resolutions and codecs you can possibly ever want. Like, who? let's be honest, who, how many of us are shooting 8K? Except for like MKBHD, but different different scenario. Uh, most of us are just shooting 4K. I'm still shooting the 1080p for a lot of my vlogs just because file size. And this does exceptional 1080p and 1080p at 100 frames a second. That's all I need as a vlogger, as a YouTuber. That's, that's ah, I'm really excited about this camera. I'm really happy with this camera and I'm tempted tempted to pick one up just for vlogs just because again it's a much smaller body i can carry it around basically everywhere in the sling i don't i don't feel the pressure to have to bring an external microphone because the internal mics are just that good so those are my thoughts on the zve one i really like if you're willing to make the investment into a mirrorless camera i think it's something you should consider all right and that's it for me guys hit that like button if you like this video subscribe if you haven't already i hope you learned something hope this was informative and uh i'm really excited to keep just making more and more content in 2024 well i think we're really starting to get the ball rolling i'm just, i'm super excited to just be making content again making videos and it's cool that i got to try this camera out so uh Thanks, Sony. Thanks for, thanks for lending me that. Have a good morning, evening, or night, and I'll see you in the next one. Let's do it Peter McKinnon style.